morning Suzuki community it's Myron at Zooks Off-Road again and you know I really like doing these videos and what I'm trying to do is get a lot of my knowledge in uh, in a format that doesn't disappear so hopefully this all works so today we're going to be talking about suspensions and specifically I'm going to be talking about my first Suzuki Samurai Gazooks because on that car I learned suspensions I learned a lot because I did nine suspensions on that car and uh, because I've got pretty much what I had did through those nine lives of suspension there, uh, we're going to be able to talk about a lot and educate you a lot. But first I always want to let you know who sponsors today's video. And today's video is sponsored by, right here you can see it, Suzuki Samurai of America. Uh, Brandon started the company in 2014. He's an enthusiast like I am. And one of the things I really appreciate about Brandon is he's going for those high quality Japanese parts. He in fact sells a lot of the stuff that I sell. He's got a few unique products. Check him out. Uh, you'll see his uh, links in the description for his website, his Instagram page and things like that. So when you're looking for that good Japanese high quality parts and it's for your samurai, remember Suzuki Samurai of America. And with that, we're, let's begin. So I got my first uh, Suzuki in 2003, and it was uh, pretty much stock. I had just moved to Arizona to semi-retire at 48 years old. I was uh, doing financial planning, and money was not an issue. I had quite a bit of money at the time. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. It's wintertime here, and I've got a little frog in my throat, so you're going to have to bear with me on that. So anyways... Uh, I was going to order a brand new Jeep. We went and looked at them because I'd been a Jeep guy since the 70s. Bought my first one, you know, brand new in the 70s. And so when we moved here, we were going to get a new Jeep. And we went and looked at them and I had to kind of special order it. But in the meantime, uh, when we first moved here, my wife's father had recently purchased a Suzuki Samurai. Now this would be the first Samurai that I ever experienced, that I ever saw, that I realized that Suzuki actually even had cars in America, knew nothing about them, nothing about their history, because when you have blinders on, you know, Jeep blinders, uh, and if it's a Jeep, you're going to look at it. If it's anything else, you're not going to look at it. Uh, even, like, I uh, had a chance to get a really old International Harvester, and I'm like, that's not a Jeep. I, I don't want that. And so uh, when I first got here, I started exploring basically where to go bass fishing, where to go in the mountains because I moved here on purpose because in an hour I can go skiing, in an hour I can go bass fishing. I really love it here in the Verde Valley. A lot of people that I've spoken to and met through the Suzuki community have actually moved here to the Verde Valley. Um, so I really like it here and I hope that uh, the Lord lets me live here for the rest of my life. Anyways. On Gadzooks, which was my first Suzuki Samurai, the first thing I did was lift it up. And how I lifted it up is I just put on really tall shackles. Now, that's a cheap way to lift it up, and I was able to get into a 235 tire without rubbing, but lifting it up did not improve the suspension at all. And so then I, what I did next is I did a spring over. So on a spring over, you know, you get perches, you put them on top of the axle, you move everything up on top, you don't change anything. We call it the hamburger lift because there's a fellow named Eric that used to have a company here in Arizona called Stomper Industries. And literally, if you brought, brought him hamburgers, fries, and a Coke, he would literally do a spring over lift for you in about 45 minutes. It was very, very fast. Of course, you drove out of there with the wrong shocks, the wrong brake lines. He just flipped the, the springs up the top. And in other videos, I've talked about these perches, how that they have to be at the right angles to keep your steering. So just keep that in mind as we go through these different kinds of suspensions. The next suspension that I did, because I was trying to get a softer ride. Here in Arizona, we have long, and I mean long, 20-mile, 30-mile washboard roads to get to the area that we want to wheel in. And so when you've got, this is how I describe it to people on the phone, and that's what I wanted to share with you. When you have got a short, narrow spring, now by narrow, I mean a Suzuki Samurai spring is only two inches wide, and by short, the fronts and rears are different on a Samurai as far as length goes, but they're short. So when I talk to people and go, if you're going to bolt in a short, narrow spring, which means what? a spring that you don't have to do anything to the frame to add it, you just bolt it into the existing shackles, existing wings, 
you know, with new bolts, new bushings, whatever. When you do that, you are, you have to understand that a short nail spring has to hold up the weight. So in my explanation on the phone a thousand times to people, um, I go with what is sprung weight, what is unsprung. So your sprung weight is the frame, the drivetrain, the tools, the dog, the overweight girlfriend, whatever. All that weight is sprung. It has to be held up by springs. Now the axles, the tires, <clears throat> those are not sprung weight. Those are unsprung weight. Their, their weight is totally on the ground. And so when you have a short narrow spring, it has to be stiff. You cannot make a short narrow spring to hold up the weight of the car. Because if it was softer and flexier, it would literally sag and your lift would be backwards. So this is uh, what I did next on Gadzooks is I went to the rough suspension. Rough is R-U-F. It means rear up front. And it literally is named so well because it is a very rough suspension. What you do is you take the springs from the front and you take the longer springs from the rear with the eyes and you match and build out of four springs from a Samurai, you build two new front springs, not rears, because at that point you've actually lifted the car up and there's different rear springs that you can get. Yes, some that bolt in, maybe with an arch, you could do that, or you could change the springs in the back. But what I did is I left my rear springs and I just did the rears up front. But again, that takes four springs to do that. Now it takes plates, which I'm not going to show you because I don't do rough suspensions. I don't do R-O-U-G-H and I don't do R-U-F. I like to do nice soft suspensions. But that was uh, such a bad experience for me that I, I went out to a ripple road here at a place called Bullpen and I was trying to get up to maybe around 35 miles an hour and the whole car was shaking so bad that my radio box fell off, just, you know, you know, the plastic radio boxes, it literally fell off on the floor. I was very upset about that because I just spent, you know, this again, about my third suspension, uh, very, really unhappy. Turned around, went home, cut it all off. Then I started calling people. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who the companies were, but there were some companies back in the day that had great salespeople. You'll love this, buy this. It'll be softer, it'll be better. And I'd buy that stuff, and now what I'm dealing with is their drive shafts don't work. Their shocks bottom out. The shock, just problem after problem after problem. And I started realizing I'm getting sold stuff. I'm not getting explained to me, you know, why, why is this stuff not working for me? All I want to do is go faster on a ripple road. Uh, I want to have a more comfortable suspension on the freeway. I want to have uh, the, the ability to, instead of the tire lifting up and moving the whole car, I would like the tire to keep stuff in, you know, articulation. I'd like the tire to go up and up and up, but keep the body straight. And so a fella here that is gone now, uh, Dave King from Asian Auto Parts of Arizona, uh, told me that the best suspension you can get is YJ. And being familiar with Jeeps, it's like, sure, 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 okay. So uh, Jeep makes a spring for Suzuki? No. Jeep makes a longer, wider spring that each leaf has more softness built into it because it's longer and it's wider. It's able to hold the weight up and be softer and flexor. And so I'm going to tell you right now a little secret. All the YJ kits are great. doesn't make any difference whose YJ kit you buy because it's the spring that's longer and wider. Here's a six-pack crown that is softer than a factory four-pack on the Suzuki Samurai. And it's because the molecular structure of the steel is more sp springy, spongy, however you want to call it. It flexes more. So now when you're articulating, you're going up on a rock. I remember my first samurai. It would scare me sometimes. Uh, one time I went up an articulation ramp and I thought I won the contest because I got all the way to the top. Problem was that my passenger tire was just as high as my driver tire. A little misunderstanding there on the rules. But I lost as soon as that passenger tire came up. But it was hanging on the shock 
And yes, it was articulating a little bit, but you can't articulate with short, narrow shocks. Now, a little bit more about articulation. Samurai frame is very cool. The front is narrower, so the springs are closer into the axle. As you get closer into the axle, it allows the axle to articulate more. On a stock Samurai, you get something like around 6 inches. What that means is 3 inches up and 3 inches down. That's what the articulation is off the center line. And of course, you know that if you take a look at your stock Samurai, you'll see your pump stops about an inch and a half. So where does all that rest come in? Well, it'll compress that as the tire droops. Again, articulation is kind of a math a mystery. It's almost like new math. Uh, and this is where you will find a difference in the YJ kits is you will have different droops of uh, because of the length of the shackle, for instance, or the length of the missing link, uh, or if they're not having a missing link. Uh, for instance, there's a company that makes a bolt-on YJ kit completely. It is actually articulates better when it's sprung over than when it's sprung under. And that's, again, the mystery of the math of articulation. But if you, if you don't understand what I'm saying there, you know, call me on my cell and I'll explain a little better. So when I talk to people about ride quality, I always talk about 1 through 10. 1 being horrible, 10 being the best that you can get in a soft, flexi suspension. And so let's give you the numbers. A stock Suzuki today with its factory springs is around a 3, so you have something to judge it by. If you do the most popular spring that you can do, you're going to hit a 4, and that would be an old man emu. It's an easy spring, everyone knows about them, everyone sells them. I don't. Yes, I've sold 10 in 20 years because people like me and go, hey, you know, I'd rather have you do it. It's almost a pain for me because i got to call some. It's not something I deal with, but yes, I'll do it for you. Um, people that put old man emus on, they don't have anything to compare it to, and so they're going to tell you it's the best suspension they ever had. People like me that have been in thousands of cars, the YJs just reign supreme as far as the suspension. I can go faster on dirt roads, I feel more safe on a taller car with big tires on the freeway, I have great stability, and then of course off-road, um, you get that boat feeling, and that's what you want. You don't want those hard hit bumps and almost any suspension if you're going too fast and you hit a crack on the road you know you, you're going to brace for impact on stuff like that the way to get rid of that is of course load bearing nitrogen shocks and that's like the best that's like 20 in the scale of 1 to 10 so I put YJ's on a 10 and I let you know there's nothing between 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 all the kits are on YJ's are 10 because it's the long, narrow spring. Now, how do you do YJs? There's different ways of doing it, but basically you have wings underneath the, sh underneath the driver and the, behind the driver, and these are the for the big eye of the factory springs. Now, the big eye means the big bushing. The small eyes go out on the ends, and as you know with the Samurai, shackles in the front bumper, shackles in the rear bumper. And so, everyone has to put on that does YJs, they have to bolt on, they're the anchors of the axle, so I'm not bolting anything on that's going to anchor my axle to the frame. I'm going to weld it on, even if it says it's a bolt-on kit, and you should too. So you do the shoes, which go over the wings, and then it drops the bolt, and you pick up some length there, plus it, it drops it so you get some lift that way. Now a typical a uh, perch lift is where you take the perch from underneath, you leave that one alone, you put a perch on the top. That's a given four and a half inches. And just to give you an idea, rear shock sprung under from the factory, a rear shock sprung over, you get a lot more articulation. This is four and a half inches difference when they're fully extended. And now in the front, because it's narrower than the rear, you get more articulation. And if you're going to do a good suspension, you're going to cut off the front upper shock mounts, which is a stem, which is short. You're going to want to cut that off, and there's a lot of products out there. Now, I'm not a fan of the Ford Towers. The Ford Towers, very limited to me, and I've also had bad experience with them ripping off the frame. So if you must do a Ford shock tower, weld it to a plate and weld that plate to the frame. I've had ripped off many a Ford Shock Tower, seen many of them rip off the frame from just welding them on. So 
This is why I got into the hoops, the hoops uh, that I have done. I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kits. Uh, I have not had any rip off, and that's a good thing. So I like hoops. Now, why would I want the front shock to be much longer instead of the rear shock only being four and a half inches? And I should have had a, a shock here to show you, but they get into the 32 to 34 inch range on most YJ kits. Why? Because the perches are closer together, and when they're closer together, you get more stuffing of the tire articulation. And that's what you're going for. You're going for a suspension that the tire and the, then, the, the say, the body, you want the tire to go up, 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 and then finally start moving the body. You don't want it to go like this because that's what gets you that tippy feeling when you've got a stiff, short, narrow suspension. So going through the YJs, I did a number of YJs on, on Godzooks, and I all ultimately ended up with Dave King's Shackle Reverse, which, by the way, that got changed when I sold the car to the fellow Joe Reeser in uh, New Mexico. Joe still has that car. I think he wants to sell it back to me. I hear that he's got a 2.0 in it, and it's linked now. Uh, so that car, but it still has all the stickers on it. So that that's really cool, because I had my wife's sticker on her door and my sticker on my door and the name of the rig because I'm very passionate about this stuff. So uh, anyways, Gazooks is still alive in New Mexico sitting in a barn waiting for me to pick her up again. So one of the things that you uh, want to do is change the hoops in the front or two hoops in the front or get longer shocks. Now another way that you get longer shocks is as you know when you're sprung under that means that your U-bolts are going to have your plates up top and when you go spring over, that means that these plates on a stock Suzuki, you could reuse them. We tend to use bigger U-bolts than normal, longer U-bolts. And, of course, if the U-bolts hang down, you'd want to shave those off. But you see this little shock stud right here? That's so simple. You can cut that off and you can take an inch and a half by inch and a half angle and you can weld it on that angle and then let's pretend that this is the, sh the housing you see how that you can just put that right on and get a lower shock mount on your axle why would you want a lower shock mount so that you can have a longer shock with more rods so that you can have more up and more down travel and that's what articulation is all about so it's a good idea to get the shock mount off of the plate and then relocate that so that you have your longer shocks. Now, let's talk about shocks in the back for a minute. So, as you know, there are two, two posts on the top of the frame, and then, of course, you've got your lower shock mounts on the axle housing. So, what I want to talk about is upper relocation bars. Now, if you were only a trailer queen, if your rig never, ever saw... Um, a pavement, then I would say you go ahead and lean your rear shocks in pretty good. But if you go on the road, then you want to have your shocks more upright. Now, if you are leaning your shocks in, one of the things that you can do wrong is you can lean them in too much. And by too much, here's the map. You want the top of your eyes to meet at one foot above the floor. That's the farthest you want to lean them in. If you have them touch where it's only an inch before the floor, uh, six inches above the floor for where the eyes are going to continue, then what you're going to have is a pyramid, upside down pyramid. Your, your car is going to body roll, which is a very dangerous thing to do at high speed on the road. Which brings me to another point with Gazooks. When I did the f ultimate YJ uh, system all done with it on a Friday there was a wheeling trip scheduled for Saturday the next day and I'm like I have got to run in, to Napa and buy the longest shocks I can so I can make it to this event tomorrow and I almost killed myself and my father-in-law a number of times that day because we're going 65 70 down the freeway and then the front tire would hit a pothole or a bump and then all of a sudden the body would go like this because I had the YJ springs on but I didn't have a good strong shock to stop the, the flex of the spring. So if you're doing YJs, you need a very stiff spring that you cannot push, shock I mean, that you cannot push in. Like you can't use a cheap shock, this one's pretty good, but not good enough for YJs, it's, it's sticky in there. You can't use a shock that's spongy. 
you've got to stop that. Because what I learned about the body, and of course I was too articulated in the back too. So remember, if you do a lot of on-road, you want your rear shocks up a little bit more. If you do a lot of off-road, you can tilt them in a little bit more, but not too much. Now let's get to the front shock. This is really important. I have to think about this for a second because I'm going to be backwards to you. So, right here is the front driver tire. You're out there. Here's the front driver door. What you all know is that a shock works best when it's straight up and down. That's when it's got all of its energy. When I do shocks on a front, I tilt them back because I do the missing link. And so when my shock, when my axle drops down, and I get all of that droop, my shock is straight up and down. So when you're installing your, your hoops in the front, and I've got a video about that, so I don't and I explain that better. But basically you want to lean this back about an inch and a half from the bottom so that when it droops, you have that one tire way deep, you've got the stronger shock working because it's now straight up and down. So to get the best ride quality you can, it's going to be a YJ. Are YJs cheap? No. They're not at all. There are two companies, well, again, I like to explain it this way. There's five companies that make YJ kits. They're all good. Uh, three companies have what I call mostly complete kits. Two companies have everything, and that would be Trail Tough, who I adore, and, of course, Zooks Off-Road. So we have the, the kit and you can add to it different kinds of shocks, you can add to it different kinds of YJ springs, but our basic kits include things that are better steering, longer brake lines, drive shaft spacers, or even heavy duty drive shafts. Uh, the front hoops, everything you need to do a YJ kit so it's safe on the road and it really is smooth off-road. You've, uh, thousands of you have heard me say this, what you're looking for is that ride that you're on in a boat, on a smooth lake and you're looking for that nice rocking when you're off-road. You don't want those hard hits that hurt you on the trail. And YJ's really, really does, uh, they really do make the best ride for the Suzuki Samurai. So for starters, that's Suspension 101. We covered a lot today. And don't forget to uh, check out our sponsor. Again, we'll put that little tag up there for you. Do it twice this time for Brandon. So check him out, and thank you so much for watching the videos. And you know the drill, the subscribe, the notification, the sharing, all of that is super to watch, super to see, and I comment when I can. But if you need tech support, call me. Bye, everyone. Be safe. Go wheeling. Have fun. Have a great holiday season this year. And the good news politics today is, thank goodness it's only one year to election time. Go vote.